I'm in a really precarious position. <laughs> Slippery rocks. What I've got today, uh, we're going to do two things at the same time. Sunglasses. Three hook flapper, a bit of a, a scratching rig really. We're going to drop that out just with some fresh lug. Uh, and then I might have a little go with the lure rod. But we might do something a bit different with this today rather than bash out the hard lures. We'll come on to that in a minute. Let's tie this one up first. Gotta be careful with these rocks. You drop anything down there, don't want to drop the camera or a good reel. <laughs> Sometimes better to put a blanket over the top. Just drop that inside those knot boys. Always run the risk of the uh, chain or hooking on the chain from those. I think we're far enough up tide of it. So a little bit of a scratching day I think. See what we can pick up. What I'm a little bit more excited about is getting that lure rod in. You might be familiar with this one. <laughs> this is the um, Do Live Stick. It's basically like a little needlefish imitation. Um, and it's weighted there as well. I'm going to tie it directly onto the eye. You've actually had some pretty rough conditions. I'm just hoping that that has sort of pounded the seabed a bit and there's fish uh, waiting to take the pickings. Such. But actually the backwash when it hits these rocks is pulling it out. Oh dear. <laughs> now what, what's happened there is that it's just worn on the where the screw goes into the top of the lure like this. Hang on. That bit there. It's worn out there where the screw goes in. So previously in the studio I uh, just wanted to show you how to rig these. Uh, you're using the twist locks by Gary Yokomoto. Basically using the twists like this, you need to be really accurate straight the way through the middle. And then the worm has to sit straight on that big wide gape. So you're pushing the hook through and it sits a little bit like that. Right, next up then, we'll give this little MEPS a go. You can really feel that spinning round. You can really feel that spinning round when it's in the water. Really old fashioned sea trout sort of lure. Let's give it a go. Just doing sort of a steady retrieve and let it flutter down a bit. Just a case of flicking it, flicking it out there. Uh, the Shimano Stradic working well with the braid. Uh, so what we're going to do next? That's the Flexo Sand Crab we talked about during the live, uh, and I've also done that to death on Instagram. Absolutely brilliant this time of year where the bass aren't exclusively chasing the bait fish they may well be looking for things like that that's on a length of fluorocarbon maybe even make your fluorocarbon 12 foot long and then i'm just going to hang that under a weighted float loads of different makes of this tronics make a good one but basically it's a float with a weight in it uh, and then you want a bead. I'm actually utilising a heavy uh, split shot there. 
so that the weight doesn't go any lower than that. But the important thing is at the other end, and then a stop knot obviously to the height uh, that you want the float to be. Try and keep it really simple. So the float won't go over that stop knot. You can add a bead. Uh, you can add a bead as well, uh, just to stop that float going over the stop knot. And that's it. <laughs> we'll give this one a go. A little bit tricky to cast on these high rocks behind me. So you can see here with the arrow, uh, it just sits there where that scum line is. Not a bad place for it to sit. And uh, you can see there, that's gully water starting to come, the may rot, dreaded may rot. It's a case of letting that float drift. Occasionally I'll give it a little tweak, um, lift it up a bit, tighten up the line. You've really just got to let the tide do its thing with these uh, little crab flies. It's the flow of the water that provides the movement, the natural movement of the bait. And obviously you don't see crabs swimming through the water at 100 miles an hour. So. But I quite like how that, the waves are hitting down the bottom there and oxygenating that water. Even though it's a little bit calm. I think it's about now that I realised we did have a three hook flapper in. <laughs> so we will check that in a minute. But I've just been consumed with playing around with the lure rod. First chance I've had coming into 2021. Um, but stay tuned. We'll see if there's anything on that three hook flapper in a minute. <laughs> little dab and a rockling Ooh. love to get it on film that float going down you do sometimes get bass pluck at it pluck at it and then go so it's quite exciting when you see that first sort of nudge You can see the little knocks there. This is uh, time lapse, but there were little touches about there. You see that one. Yes. It's time to reel in. See what we got. I'd cast out into the flowing water. I think that was making the difference. You see what it is yet? Three hook flapper, not quite as subtle is it as using the clip rigs that we normally use. Well, as you can see, the weather's really changeable. We had a bright sunny day, and we've got storm clouds hugging the coastline. <laughs> the typical British weather. 